I'm just really grateful that I got out before the buildings collapsed. A few moments ago, we saw you when you were reunited with your sister. What went through your mind? Just very nice to have family here. And members of our own Dateline family found themselves in the middle of the maelstrom. Producer Christian Martin saw the smoke from his home and rushed to the scene. With a journalist's instinct and ingenuity, he bought a camera from a tourist and started shooting. And the collapse happened 10 minutes after I got the camera. I shot a couple of shots of the building burning. As I said, it was, you know, it, be, it had the feeling that as terrible as a tragedy as it was, that it was beginning to, to get under control. But control was about to be lost. And then, you know, the cop was like, run, run, to save my life, and uh, took off on a dead sprint. I mean, as fast as I can go. One of the towers was collapsing as he looked through his lens. Then, a wall of swirling debris came racing right at him. I was thinking about getting around the corner. I was thinking about getting out of the way of that cloud. And then, you know, I got blown into the car and it was pitch black. And, I mean, you just cannot... overemphasize how many completely innocent, beautiful people were just, you know, destroyed by this. And in a city that doesn't often display it, compassion was abundant. Dateline producer Lisa Parker also caught by the crumbling towers. There was one point when I really thought I wasn't going to make it. This guy, Kevin, his name, helped me. We climbed up over this ledge and he pushed me over and what I was seeing were policemen and firefighters and all the people that were, they were still going, they were still doing their job and they were going towards it. And what do you think happened to them? I'm sure, I, I mean, hopefully, I'm sure some people could have survived the debris, but um, I don't know, I hope they're okay. As night falls in New York, a chorus of voices, unassuming people, attacked, anxious, and angry. We've got to figure out a way to get along a lot better than this. Um, you know, this is an unacceptable reality. I don't know what's going on with airport security. I think about the mothers who've lost their children, the children who've lost their mothers. You know how when you go out on a flight and you're always complaining because you got to be there two hours in advance? Well, don't complain anymore because people died today because of it. When you bring it down to the very basic, Tom, you were a victim of terrorism today. Yes, I was. I am mad. I am very, very mad. Because this is not my war. And, you know, keep your war over there. Don't bring it here. See how the emotions have been running today, during the day, not only just here in the New York metropolitan area where there are real victims of this, as you just met in Don Fratangelo's piece, but across the country today, emotions some people say they haven't felt or seen in this country since December 7th, 1941, the last time the United States was attacked by, and we presume here, a foreign power. We are joined right now by Robert Butterworth, a noted child psychologist and trauma counselor in Los Angeles. Robert, let me get you right off the bat, your impression of the people uh, you just saw and what they are dealing with. Well, well, Brian, what we saw, we could almost describe as, as the new face of America, as the loss of innocence. I, I think for a long time we've seen terrorism out there. We never had that psychological sense that we, it would happen here. And, and a country that has a good spirit, that open feeling toward people, and, and a kind of a generous kind of, a, of approach may now start turning inward. We, we may start getting suspicious and we may start being afraid, an emotion that it's been really a stranger in America. Uh, now, we, how does this differ? Uh, are there textbook cases of, of post-traumatic...